Live from KSAT 12. The 6 o'clock news starts right now. You can pretty much feel it in the air. The heat, the humidity, the energy that could set off serious storms in South Texas and the Hill Country. Adam Kasky tracking this weather system joins us with a quick look at what's going on right now. Adam. And see if we do have a severe thunderstorm warning right now south of San Antonio along the I-35 corridor. So let's get right to it. It's basically moving into the Bigfoot Moor and Divine area. It's that little section. You see some activity all around us, but particularly what we're watching is this little uh, part of the screen there just near Pearsall. It's a thunderstorm that really blossomed over the past 30, 45 minutes. This is a severe thunderstorm in Frio County. The warning does include Pearsall. And this is until 6.30 p.m. It's tracking to the northeast at about 20, 25 miles per hour. And should it stay on the same track, the strongest part of the storm would make it to more. At about 6.14, Divine then at 6.35-ish, and assuming it stays on that path, Lytle then could see it a little closer to 7 p.m. or a little before 7 p.m. But these storms have had a tendency of splitting today and we could see a split from this one. So something we're watching very closely and we'll keep an eye on its track around town. We have some showers and thunderstorms south side near Elmendorf, Bronig Lake, even moving into downtown Leon Valley area and up near Holotus. None of this is severe, even Seguin to New Braunfels, not severe. We'll continue to monitor this. And of course, I'm going to have a full update and let you know what to expect tomorrow and the days ahead coming up in a few minutes. Thank you so much, Adam. Meantime, the mayor's declaration of a public health emergency and all the restrictions that go along with that are now extended through the end of the month. City Council approving extending the declaration this morning. But it wasn't a unanimous vote. Garrett Berger talked with the lone councilwoman who voted against this latest extension. The mayor's declaration of a public health emergency can now go through the end of the month, but the mayor said that the city should be prepared to go beyond that. City officials say we don't know when this pandemic will be over, so they can't say when the restrictions that go with this declaration could be lifted. When it came time to vote, only District 7's Anna Sandoval voted against the extension. She told reporters afterwards that she supports the order, but she wanted to draw attention to other issues she thinks need to be considered that don't necessarily fall into the order. So you've got the order and it's really just one piece in the whole response, right? Keeping people away is one piece of that. In addition is how you do the testing, how you isolate, how you plan for the future. So I think there's a few more things that we should explore doing and um, that's why I voted no. Among her ideas, Sandoval listed expanding accommodations for COVID-19 patients to include potentially positive people, having a coordinated communication plan, convening members of local medical and public health schools for their expertise, and having council members involved in some health policy decisions. A Metro Health spokeswoman said they believe they do have a coordinated communications plan in place, and they are tapping local experts. The current order will expire at the end of April 30th. Outside Council Chambers, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. At New at 6, we look at COVID-19's impact on the city's third largest industry, tourism. With 19 conventions canceled so far, the hotel industry projected to lose more than $65.5 million in revenue. Jesse DeGriotta reports even one of the city's most luxurious upscale hotels is not immune. The historic Hotel Emma behind the Pearl may not be located in the city's hospitality hub downtown, but it's not immune to much of what's happened there. We're open for essential travel only, and our occupancy is, is minimal, almost next to, to nothing. Where every year it's now empty lobby would be busy with guests spending their Easter at the Hotel Emma. <laughs> Easter weekend is non-existent uh, where we would be thriving. The setting may be different, but the situation here, he says, is the same as it is at other hotels. Really just scary, unprecedented, unimaginable times that we're all facing and we're trying to get through it the best way that we can. Yes, a grocery store, the larder, meaning a large pantry, is selling needed essentials supplied by the Hotel Emma. We do have a grocery store that is helping to serve this community. So, you know, that is uh, essentially where uh, our business is today. That and meals to go. Hotel Emma's CEO believes his industry will eventually recover from what is now the unknown. Jesse Degollado, KSAT 12 News. And meanwhile, HEB confirming three additional employees tested positive for COVID-19. That brings the total to five HEB employees in San Antonio. 
The employees worked at three separate locations. The employee on WW White Road last at the store on March 31st. The other April 1st on Nacogdoches and Thousand Oaks. The third on April 3rd at Bandera and Gilbo. HEB says all employees who had contact with those infected have been notified and all stores continue to be disinfected. Whether from the grocery store or restaurant pickup, is the food safe? The CDC, as well as other health experts, are saying that currently no evidence exists that COVID-19 is spread by food. The bigger risk, they say, is getting too close to potentially infected people who may be spreading droplets when they cough, speak, or even breathe. Even so, you should be extra vigilant in taking normal food safety precautions, such as washing your produce. If we're talking about fruits and vegetables, you rinse them under running water. You use a scrub brush if they have a peel to scrub the outside, um, and then you eat them normally. Consumer Reports Food Safety Director Dr. James Rogers tells us he does not recommend soap and water on produce because it can lead to stomach illness. Be sure to cook meats and poultry to proper temperatures, though. That should kill any number of pathogens that can make you sick. And as for curbside pickup or restaurant drive throughs he says that's actually less risky than going into a store because of social distancing. He suggests tossing, though, the outer packaging immediately and most importantly, wash your hands be thoroughly before you eat. The moratorium on jury summons and jury trials due to the COVID-19 pandemic, which will expire next week, has been extended. The original order was issued on March 13th, leaving the central jury room empty. Today, Administrative Judge Ron Ron Hell extended the order through May 15th. That May 15th is not an absolute date where we're going to begin subsequent to that. That is just from now until then. That's another month where we're not going to call juries another month or we're not going to have any jury trials in Bear County. The judge said this will create a large backlog in criminal district courts, but the move was necessary in order to protect the public. Today was another mega giveaway by the San Antonio Food Bank. Some 5,000 people registered to get free food at Trader's Village to tide them through the stay at home orders. They were there before sunrise. It's the new normal and it's having a big impact on food bank partner nonprofits who now are not allowed to do their shopping at the food bank for their own neighborhood giveaways. The need is still there, but the food is not, at least not at old food bank pricing. Today we have sausage, uh, snacks, barbecue, um, and water. At this free food giveaway earlier this week, the food is just as satisfying, but with the new food bank rules in place, it's definitely more expensive. The meals, all 414 of them given away on this day, are cooked up with food bought at retail stores, not at the deeply discounted food bank as it was before. Yeah, the cost uh, is is definitely way, way different uh, for a lot of organizations. And Juan Ramos is part of the army of volunteer organizations that has had to change gears in the crisis. Instead of his R3 this center just pressure. mentoring kids, he's distributing meals and also trying to get them and their families online to sign up for those big food bank mega giveaways. Of the people in our area here don't even, even if they knew how to use the computer, don't have access to that. They don't have access to internet. They don't have access to computers. So these neighborhood drive throughs are what they've come to depend on the most. More expensive than ever for the nonprofit, but for the recipients, more needed than ever. They uh, don't have any way of getting out of their houses right now. Um, because of the coronavirus, it's very dangerous to, to, to try and come out of their houses to even go shopping. So. Us being able to do this, we're able to bring the sustenance and the nutrition to the families directly and um, have some happy tummies by the end of the day. As just an example, prior to the COVID-19 new food bank rules, nonprofit food bank partners could make about 400 meals out of about $100 at the food bank. Today, it's more like $500 to get the same number of meals. The San Antonio Food Bank said it had to make those changes, though, to make sure that everyone who needs fresh food in our region can get it. Time saver traffic right now with TransGuide. This is 410 at Fredericksburg, and you can see the storms have entered the area. You can also see this is usually a backed up in a backed up area of 410. Very busy. Good to see. Not so busy tonight, but Adam Kasky. 
Evidence of rain in the area, video of rain in the area. Yeah, and there's a downpour looking uh, basically northwest, I believe. And uh, that's a downpour that's over uh, part of Bear County at this time. We'll take a closer look at that with the radar here just momentarily. But we do have some of those showers and storms popping up around town. And so far, we've been lucky locally and very fortunate that we haven't had any severe weather. But you head just south down I-35, and we've got this strong thunderstorm. Actually, very much stronger and continuing to strengthen just northwest of Pearsall as it heads to the northeast at about 25 miles per hour. A closer look at this, its hail potential and its track coming right up. The pandemic taking a toll on the arts here in San Antonio coming up tonight. How you can help the San Antonio Symphony during these troubled times. We are about 20 to 30 seconds away from the daily briefing from San Antonio Mayor Ron Nuremberg and County Judge Nelson Wolf from City Council Chambers. Uh, just today, the, the uh, extension of the restrictions goes all the way to April 30th, which is a, a big move for the city and the county, acknowledging that we have not yet perhaps met our peak of cases of coronavirus. So today, a big day that people have been waiting for. Let's listen in now. This is our daily update on COVID-19 in our community. Two more of our friends and neighbors have passed away tonight of COVID-19. One patient was a man in his 50s with a history of underlying medical condition. The other was a woman in her 60s who also had some underlying health conditions. This is yet another reminder that this virus does not discriminate. We must all do our part to stop the spread of COVID-19, especially as we head into a weekend that is normally celebrated with our friends and family. As San Antonians, we're a tight-knit community that loves our extended family. But this Easter, we need you to love your family from a distance and remember that we can still be together while we're apart. Only gather with members of your household. And by connecting a little bit differently this year, we can all ensure that we come together again for Easter next year. When the numbers are updated on our website tonight at 7 o'clock, we'll have now 615 cases of COVID-19 in our community, and that's up from 554 yesterday. We have 146 travel-related cases and 182 community transmission cases. 217 of those confirmed cases are the result of close contact with another person who is already positive for coronavirus. 70 cases now remain under investigation. We are grateful that 92 people in our city have fully recovered from the virus. Tonight, 85 people are being hospitalized for COVID-19, 55 of those are in intensive care, and 42 people are on ventilators. We wish them all a very speedy recovery. Judge. Thanks, Mayor. You may remember, I believe it was Sunday, when the Surgeon General came on and warned us that we were entering our most difficult and saddest week. And he certainly was right nationwide. When you look at the death toll in a 24-hour period that ended this last Tuesday at 6 p.m., it was the highest that we ever had. We're experiencing deaths and we're experiencing problems here. Not as much as it is in other parts of the nation, but we've got to keep vigilant on this. For those of you that are at home uh, that have someone there that's showing symptoms, uh, that may even have the coronavirus, I, I suggest you might want to take a look at consumer reports. There's some good information in there that you could use to help yourself. Uh, it's important, they say, when, if you're facing like that, to clean the services that are frequent a lot at least three times a day. Now, there's some household products that you have in your home that you could use. Bleach and hydrogen peroxide are certainly uh, ones that you can use. And of course, we say over and over, uh, clean your hands, warm water, and scrub hard. I want to give a special thanks to uh, UTSA professor and researcher uh, Doug Franks. Uh, they're playing a, a major role now in trying to find a cure to this uh, terrible uh, COVID-19 that we're facing. Uh, he accumulated over 250 formulas over a period of time, and he's now sending them to the medical branch in Galveston to help uh, cure and, and develop a cure through using hydroxychlorine. So hopefully that's going to play out right. Another good reason to stay home tonight. Uh, we have some high winds and hail and, and a storm coming at us if it keeps up like this. Both our emergency departments are working on it. You may want to secure anything that you may have in your front yard and make sure you bring your pets in for tonight. Let me say a couple of things about the upcoming election on July the, July the 14th. 
Uh, there's some federal and state lawsuits that are pending uh, that regards the mail-in ballots. Uh, we expect to have a hearing on one of those cases on April the 15th. And the decision the court's facing is whether to extend the definition of, of handicap to include those who are fear contacting COVID-19 at the election site. At this time, the Secretary of State has not set any guidelines and has not made it clear what they intend to do. I want you to know I strongly support the scope of mail-in ballots and supporting the lawsuit, and I urge the Secretary of State to set guidelines. This will not only protect the voters and election officials against this terrible uh, problem that we're facing with COVID-19, but it also expands voting rights for everybody. 250,000 of you all voted in the Democratic and Republican primaries this past March. Uh, we're getting ready for the runoff. Uh, Jackie Callahan, Bear County Election Administrator, has 23,000 mail-in ballots that are ready to go. That was how many requested the first go-round. And she's also ordered another 100,000 envelopes if the lawsuit prevails and if the Secretary of State sets it up uh, where we would be able to protect people through with COVID-19 through this election. Again, thank you all of you for so much work that you're doing to help us through, get through this. Thank you, Judge, and I agree. Uh, we have to make sure we expand access to mail-in ballots. And I also wanna thank those letter carriers and postal workers who are delivering those ballots even through this coronavirus uh, epidemic. I want to also take this opportunity to remind you that VIA has set a safe capacity limit of 16 riders on buses to ensure adequate social distancing, and that is 16 seated passengers, no standing allowed. It's re recommended that you wear a mask in tight spaces for your safety and those around you. And if a bus hits maximum safe capacity, VIA will dispatch a special spacer bus to make sure that no one is left without a ride. As always, you can get the latest information on COVID-19 by subscribing to our text program. Just text COSAGOV to 55000 or visit sanantonio.gov slash COVID-19. Stay the course. We will get through this. And now we'll take some questions. That's the very latest from the county judge and San Antonio Mayor Ron Nuremberg. You could tell the mayor very concerned about the fact that we're in Holy Week right now, and Easter is a time when we usually get together in big family gatherings, cookouts, set up the tents at Brackenridge Park while the parks are closed down for camping. His emphasis, be together in different ways while we're apart. And, and the way to underscore uh, that suggestion is by the fact that the numbers that they gave out just a few minutes ago indicate that we've had apparently 61 new cases overnight mm -hmm. of COVID-19, bringing our total number of cases to 615, 182 of those community spread, 217 though close contact. And that's what we're trying to avoid. Uh, that's why they're asking you to love your family from a distance. Yeah, and also the fact that we had two new deaths to report today. Yes. That brings, I believe, the total to 22 deaths. A man in his 50s, a woman in her 60s, both of them with underlying health conditions. Yes, yeah, a lot uh, to uh, digest every single day when they do these briefings. Again, um, they're asking everyone uh, to celebrate Easter with only family members within your household and to, you can contact your other family, your more distant family uh, via other methods, the video or telephone, in order to keep us all safe. It's gonna be a tough week doing that, and um, we are with you on that one. Absolutely, all right, let's check in with Adam Kasky right now. The judge gave a little bit of a weather forecast there for us. Adam, talking about the storms that are coming through and asking people to be careful. Yeah, and that's true because we do have the storms moving in right now, and I'm actually just updating the storm track here as we speak, so that's why I'm uh, looking off to the side, but I'm getting the latest track on this severe storm as it is heading to the northeast toward uh, San Antonio, so let's get to this right now and I get the very latest information to you. There's a look at that storm. First, I'm going to start with the wider view before we jump back into it, and the yellow lines there, you see everybody within the yellow lines is under a severe thunderstorm watch until 10 p.m. We don't have a lot of activity out there right now, just some sporadic showers in the hill country and a few showers closer to the border. Even around town, we have some areas of heavy rain, lightning and thunder. This is the severe storm. 
This is the big one that's out there right now. It's just west of Divine, north of Pearsall. The strongest part of it just to the west of I-35, and that's moving northeastward toward Highway 90 and even the west side of San Antonio. Already seen some rain just south of Castorville, near Somerset, Von Army, Divine. Heavy rainfall, lightning and thunder, but the core of this storm and the main uh, threat is just west of I-35 around Divine. Now, pushing off to the northeast at 25 miles per hour, assuming it stays on track and in the same form that it's in right now, it would likely hit Castroville. The strongest part of the storm this is would start to hit Castroville around 640 p.m. Lackland Air Force Base around 7:10 p.m. and maybe even Holotus in the rim closer to 7:30 7:40. There is a hail core within this, and it did show signs of much bigger hail over an inch in diameter, and that could still redevelop as it moves to the northeast. Otherwise, around town, southeast side, just non-severe activity that we have out there. Even New Braunfels on into Seguin and Luling. All right, so for the rest of the evening, the threat of severe weather, especially through about 10 p.m. Then tomorrow. Low clouds, a little bit of afternoon sun, much cooler at 72 with just a slight chance of rain. Some scattered showers and storms Saturday and into very early Sunday morning, but most of Easter looking sunny and 84. Thank you so much, Adam. You know, it's funny because Ursula was just asking me, I wonder what Jakob Pertle is up to. <laughs> she was like, I wonder, I wonder, you know, you know why, you know he, why I asked the question? Is he doing okay? He just has a really neat name. She probably looked ahead in the rundown, didn't she? And she I don't, saw I, didn't, I think she just Pirtle. has a, I think she just has a, a certain affection for <laughs> you Jakob. You on Myra like this. Spurs Center, <laughs> yes. Jakob Pertle, oh, about five weeks ago, suffered a sprained MCL. Well, he is now updating us on his status. Plus, David Wetzel, you remember him from Reagan High School. He's playing guitar and it's gone viral. Coming up. Spurs center Jakob Pertl was having a nice season before suffering a sprained MCL February 29th versus the Orlando Magic. In 58 games this season, he averaged 5.3 points, 5.3 rebounds, and nearly one and a half blocks per game. Now he missed a total of five contests due to the injury before the season was suspended because of COVID-19. He's a legitimate rim protector and recently told an Austrian outlet his knee is ready to go after rehabbing here in San Antonio. Quote, although I have no experience with the injuries, I expect that I will have no problems if the season continues. End quote. Pirtle also said he'd like to finish the season, but understands that the NBA can't resume play. The horse shooting challenge will go down starting Sunday Sunday night, the NBA and ESPN finalized a deal to televise the event featuring current NBA stars Trey Young, Chris Paul, and Zach Levine. Players would be taped competing at home locations on indoor or outdoor courts and compete shot for shot in the traditional playground game. No dunking is allowed. State Farm will donate more than $200,000 on behalf of the participants to charities focus on coronavirus response efforts. Eight players will participate in the single elimination horse competition. The winner of Group 1 will face the winner of Group 2 in the finals. And Group 1 features NBA legend Chauncey Billups, current NBA players Mike Conley Jr. and Trey Young, and WNBA great Tamika Catchings. Group 2 is NBA great Paul Pierce, current NBA players Chris Paul and Zach Levine, and WNBA guard Allie Quigley. Back in January, Baylor head football coach Matt Rule left for the NFL and the Carolina Panthers. He took over a college program in disarray and in his third season led the Bears to an 11-3 record and a Sugar Bowl appearance. One guy by his side during that time was former Reagan Rattlers head football coach David Wetzel. He joined Baylor in December 2016 as associate AD for football relations. Via FaceTime today, Wetzel said Rule did a great job while in Waco. Coach Rule did a phenomenal job of leading. Uh, I think we recruited really, really well, uh, which I'm proud to say that, uh, you know, we did that through the Texas high schools. Yeah. And uh, just, you know, we've got some really, really outstanding players on our roster. And uh, just, you know, some guys did a really, really great job of, of buying into the, to the process and the brand. I just can't say enough about what our, our coaching staff did. Uh, those guys came in here, many of them from far away places, and really bought into what Baylor stands for, what it could become, what it could be. And we just had a group of young men that uh, did a phenomenal job of, of working their tails off to, to make it special.
Back in late March, Wetzel tweeted a video of himself playing guitar and singing a gospel tune. He wrote that he misses the players and Sunday Baylor football chapel. I just uh, kind of felt led to uh, play a song and uh, just tell the players we missed them. But it really, um, really, it led back to Coach Rule felt really strongly during the 2019 season about every Sunday evening having a team chapel, mm -hmm. which he had me lead. And crazy as it seems, uh, this old man right here got his guitar up in front of a bunch of young guys <laughs> and played, and they all jumped in and sang and had a great time with it. And so just wanted to reach back to them and tell them we missed them and just a song to kind of honor the Lord and just kind of remind them about where we are right now and where we can lean on in, in tough times. That video has nearly 54,000 views and Wetzel said that just blows him away. And I'll tell you what, he's got a really good voice. Really? Yes. I couldn't, you couldn't really hear it from that clip, so we're gonna have to check it out we'll online. Check it out, yes. Yeah. Let him go viral. <laughs> Thank you, Larry. You got Thanks, Larry. it. And coming up, our weekly conversation with an emergency room doctor about the COVID crisis coming up. Segment of the show where we try and tease the facts out from a lot of the fear that's out there with coronavirus. We call it the coronavirus Q&A and pleased as always on Thursday to have Dr. Robert A. Frolickstein, an emergency room doctor, with us. Thank you, doctor, for being with us. And, you know, I, I feel like I ask you this every week, but the first question I want to know is what are you seeing in the emergency room right now as it pertains to COVID-19? So, yeah, interesting. Not much has changed yet, which is a good sign. Uh, we have seen a, a little uptick in the number of patients that are suffering from COVID uh, come to our emergency departments and be admitted to the hospital. But it's thankfully not been as rapid of an increase as, as many anticipated. Uh, and, and along the same lines, we're, we're seeing a decrease in the volume of patients that we would normally still see. So that, that still uh, concerns me. So, again, if you think you need to come to the hospital, know that it is safe. We have ways of keeping you safe and isolated from any potential uh, patients with COVID-19. So please if you need to get our help, come get our help. Uh, doctor, one of the questions that I have has to do with the idea that not as many uh, cases are coming forward uh, as we kind of expected, we were led to believe. Does this mean that we are closer to being able to reopen? And, and in your line of work, what does that mean, getting back to normal? How does that happen? Uh, so there's a lot wrapped up in that question. I think the, the reason we have not seen the dramatic increase of cases is frankly because we're, we're doing a great job with the social distancing. That is what is flattening this curve. And so great job, everyone. Thanks for doing that. As to when we can reopen and regain normal life, um, you know, it, it, obviously the easy answer is once we have effective treatment and a uh, safe and effective vaccine. That's not happening anytime soon. We want to reopen. We want to get back to normal sooner than that. Uh, and so that's going to be a big push on, a, on several public health um, areas uh, that we need to, to push hard in order to reopen normal, normally. The mayor earlier this week said that he would like to see people start wearing masks. I mean, he talked about the fact that he's not making it mandatory, but he is asking everyone that's out there to wear masks, not so much for their own safety, but for the safety of people who are around them. Do you welcome that change? Uh, I do. I think it's, um, and that's the key right there, is that it's it's really what you're doing by wearing a mask is protecting others. If you happen to be an asymptomatic or pre-symptomatic carrier, then you're protecting others from that spread. It's an, essentially an extension of social distancing. As much as the stores and everything is, are trying to keep people six feet apart, it's just really hard to do that. So the mask help with that. Uh, keeping that uh, keeping that line of thinking, uh, the asymptomatic patient, uh, where are we on getting blood taken to find out if we have antibodies, those of us who have been asymptomatic? To, is, that, is that something that is reasonable to ask of at this point? It's, we're still in the very early phases. I know it, that within the Methodist healthcare system, I think we do have some antibody testing capabilities right now in a very limited amount. And more importantly, though, we don't know exactly how to use that information when we get those results. Um, 
we don't we don't know for sure that that would those results would even tell us you have lifelong immunity, which is what we're we're hoping for. Are you are, and this is a question maybe I'll bring up again at nine o'clock when we talk, but there are a lot of social media theories out there. One of them that mosquitoes can spread this, which you and I have talked about in the past is not true. Um, are, are you getting frustrated at all with the fact that there seem to be a lot of social media theories out there? Uh, you know, misinformation and the widespread availability of misinformation is, is certainly fr frustrating. Um, that's why I really just I recommend if you really want to know what's going on, go to cdc.gov or the coronavirus.gov and get the, the information from, from the experts. Or KSAT 12 because we have the experts on there with us. Right there. there you go. We do. Thank you so you much, go. Dr. Robert Frelickstein, for talking with us. Well, of course, you're, he's going to be with you again tonight at 9 o'clock. We'll delve more deeply into these issues. Yeah, and we take questions from viewers at 9. Thank you, doctor. We'll see you then. All right. We'll be right back with weather. Take a live look outside with live cam and there are storms in the area. Adam Kasky. Yes, we do have storms across the area. Nothing severe right now, but we do have some activity that's moving into San Antonio at this time and still a severe thunderstorm watch that's in effect for parts of our area. So here's a look at our rain chances in the days ahead. Tomorrow, just a 20% chance. They jump up a bit Saturday and especially Saturday night, but then taper off again for Easter. As for rainfall out there, we'll take a close look at the radar and those thunderstorms coming right up. Usually this week, the buzz in Washington would be about the White House's Easter eggs, but due to COVID-19, that isn't happening this year. No. So look what we have here. First Lady Melania Trump donating 25,000 commemorative wooden Easter eggs to Children's National Hospital and several federal agencies. They're pretty cool looking eggs. Other groups getting the eggs include the American Red Cross and some local grocery store chains. The White House Easter egg roll started in 1878. It's only been canceled a few times since then during both World Wars and White House renovations. The commemorative wooden egg tradition started by First Lady Nancy Reagan in 1981. While we're supposed to be staying inside for most of the time, stay home, work safe, you've heard it, but it's okay to get out and get some fresh air. And that means you have time to get out and celebrate National Wildlife Week. Yeah, it happens every April. Just be sure to maintain social distancing and safety rules. This week has been sponsored by the National Wildlife Federation since 1938. Its goal is to celebrate, conserve, and protect wildlife and its habitats. National Day is the National Wildlife Week. Okay. Well, maybe not, maybe not get outside right not, now. Not right in now. There is a right. reviewing area because if it we're, we could have a rough night in some spots, right, Adam? And the main threat is really just over the next couple of hours, I think, for the most part. Otherwise, just some shower activity possible later tonight. But in terms of the potential for severe weather, it's, I think, in the short term here. And with how primed our atmosphere has been today, very conducive to severe weather. We're lucky we haven't seen more. OK, so let's take a look at what's out there now to talk about right in the smack dab center of your screen. That's the main thunderstorm we're watching, and that was a storm that had a history of likely large hail in Frio County west of I-35. But you notice now as we go through time and it moves toward Castroville and parts of uh, southwestern Bear County, even Somerset, Von Army area uh, toward SeaWorld as well. It's starting to dissipate a little bit and fall apart. Still a lot of good rainfall with this and some lightning and thunder, but it doesn't look as threatening. And right now there actually is not a severe thunderstorm warning with this storm. It's moving into town where the cold fronts already hit us and the environment isn't as favorable for strong and severe thunderstorms, just more garden variety activity. Nonetheless, we will obviously keep a close eye on it. So here's a look at the still frame mode and you see a good part of Atascosa County west of I-37 getting good rain. Southeastern Medina County, this is good rain and you even head into San Antonio right downtown. We've got some good shower activity, a little bit of lightning and thunder. Here's our hail product and this is nice because earlier when this storm was down in Frio County, 
it showed a big hail core with large hail, probably one and a half inches in diameter. Now it's shrunken down quite a bit. Again, the environment not quite as favorable where that storm is moving, and that's into the Castroville area, mainly just heavy rain, maybe some pea sized hail for you. And even on the west side of town, you could see some pea sized hail from this storm. But right now it's just good rainfall with a little bit of lightning and thunder. And I do want to point out on the north side here and to our friends in the Bulverde area and even Timberwood Park, we have this little batch of rain that has popped up and that's what was over Helotus earlier. Now it's basically Timberwood Park Bulverde northward up 281 and where it joins 46 and even on the south side of town, we've got some moderate to heavy rainfall around 1604, even around China Grove area toward Lavernia, just some scattered activity. We had some near New Braunfels and then Seguin had pushed eastward toward Luling, but it looks like Seguin, especially those of you just south of there, will get clipped by this next little downpour that's moving through New Berlin at this time. All right, so some activity out there. We're lucky we don't have more severe weather than what we've already seen with how unstable our air is. But the cold front starting to help us out to mitigate that severe potential. And here's the cold front. Winds have shifted out of the north. Now it's not all that cold behind this front, but it is going to have an impact on our temperatures. Right now we're down to 76 in San Antonio. That's down from 89 earlier today and obviously some rain cooled air and some boundary outflow boundaries out there. But as we go through time tonight, we'll see temperatures fall down to near 60 degrees. That'll be at sunrise tomorrow morning, mostly cloudy through the day tomorrow with just a little bit of afternoon sunshine and a high temperature around 72. OK, so noticeably cooler tomorrow and not quite as sticky and humid as what we've been experiencing. So the main storm threat is through about 10 11 PM tonight, and then it's just a little bit of light shower activity possible into tomorrow. That's that 20% chance and we get into Saturday 40% chance of so some scattered showers and storms likely to pop up in the afternoon and especially Saturday night into the pre dawn hours on Sunday. Yes, Easter Sunday, the pre dawn hours. We could see some storms around town and that could leave us with a damp start to the day at sunrise, but otherwise it's looking like a beautiful Easter, bright sunshine and 84. Oh, look what happens next week. All right, if it wasn't for all this storm activity, one of our headlines would be this cold front that oh, yeah. hits a Sunday night. Look what that does to our temperatures. Next week, we're going to have mornings in the 40s and afternoons down in the 60s. So I hope you still have your long sleeves out. Yeah, we'll need our sweaters. It, it, it seems as though the weather just can't decide what it wants to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like unpredictable April yes. so far. In case you missed it, coming up next. Here's today's In Case You Missed It. April 30th. As expected, that's how long the City Council agreed this morning to keep the mayor's latest declaration of a public health emergency in effect with all of the current restrictions. The extension just gets the city's order in line with the states, counties, and other communities. Assistant City Manager Colleen Bridger said they're working with experts to determine when the pandemic could be over. She said there are many details they can work out about when they can start loosening restrictions, but it's hard to think that far in advance since we haven't hit the peak yet here. And she doesn't think this pandemic will be over in San Antonio by April 30th. I do think we need to prepare ourselves for the fact that this is not, we are not returning to normal on April 30th. Three new HEB employees from separate locations have tested positive for COVID-19. There are now five stores where an HEB partner has tested positive. All employees who had contact with three individuals have been notified. All the stores, meantime, have been disinfected. The number of HEB partners who have tested positive is currently standing at five. The San Antonio Food Bank taking its mega food distribution to an entirely new level at Traders Village. The event started at 10 a.m. this morning, but there was a line before the sun was even up. Today's mega distribution, the fourth for the food bank. The goal to send more than 5,000 families home with enough groceries for the entire month. In a local distillery giving back to first responders amid the coronavirus pandemic, the Rebecca Creek Distillery in Timberwood Park began making hand sanitizer just under two weeks ago. The founder, Stephen Eisen, says he had all the tools and equipment needed to make the hand sanitizer. And not only is it helping out the first responders on the front lines, Eisen says it's also helping keep his employees working.
All right, so we're going to take another close look at the radar here. You see some activity southwest of town, but I also do want to point out that we have some storms even locally, and we'll get to those in a minute. But first, I want to share the seven day with you again, because there are some chances of light rain tomorrow, just isolated in nature, not a big deal. And then especially as we get into Saturday night through the pre dawn hours on Sunday, and I really want to focus on next week. Yeah, Easter's looking OK. Most of the day sunny 80s, but next week, Big temperature drop, noticeably cooler. All right, back to the radar. Nothing severe around town right now that we're watching. Part of the storm in Medina County as it crosses into Bear County on the northwest side of town and even Atascosa County approaching Pleasanton. In and around San Antonio, some good rain, a little bit of lightning and thunder. Moving into Canyon Lake, we've got a nice little downpour. Nothing severe here. This is just a good shower. And even southwest of town, nice little area of rain. Those of you along the Highway 38 corridor from La Prior, southward Carrizo Springs. You've got some decent rain. We'll continue to see the threat for some severe thunderstorms over the next few hours, and then the threat really falls off uh, later on tonight. We'll have another update online and at 10. Thanks so much, Adam, and thank you for watching the news at six with us. See you on the night beat.